So in this video we're going to be discussing chapter 6, section 4, which covers metallic bonding. And the first thing you need to know is that metallic bonding is neither uh, ionic nor covalent. I know earlier it may have seemed that there was sort of an absolute two. Well, there's not. The thing is, uh, metals are very different just in their properties from ionically bonded and covalently bonded compounds. Uh, for example, they're very excellent conductors of electricity. I, by the way, is the s symbol for uh, electric current in physics. And uh, they're even better at conducting than molten ionic compounds. And this is because uh, in ionic and covalent compounds, what happens is that, at least in the ionic compounds, the electrons are sort of bound to one atom either the cation or the anion, usually the anion. And then in covalent bonds, electron pairs are shared. However, uh, they're still bound to however many uh, atoms are within that molecule in which they're shared. They have no freedom to sort of roam across an entire material. However, in metals, electrons can flow freely across a whole sheet of metal several meters uh, across. So to explain this behavior we of course have to look to the periodic table and the first thing you'll notice is that the alkali metals and the alkali earth metals over here which fill the uh, s orbital have the p orbital completely free and all of the d block elements have both their p orbitals free and the majority of them will tend to have much of the D block free as well. So what you end up having is that uh, many electrons in these metals, uh, in sheets of these metals, are sort of loosely associated with their atoms. So much so that they uh, are able to disassociate from their host atom and become uh, delocalized. And now what this means is that the atoms, or the uh, electrons rather, can flow freely across a sheet of metal, completely leaving their host atoms in a sort of sea of electrons. Meanwhile, the uh, inner shells of the metals and their nuclei are attached in a lattice, much like the salt lattice I discussed in my lat last video but they are uh, bonded by a positive and negative charge to the sea of electrons. And this sort of uh, relationship between a very structured lattice forms a sheet or rod or car spoke or what have you of metal and the sea of electrons flowing around these uh, center parts uh, is what's called metallic bonding. So the freedom of electrons in this sort of electron C to move freely through the metal, uh, mostly unimpeded, is what allows them to conduct uh, current as well as heat uh, so well because the electrons can quickly transfer momentum from one end of the metal. If we draw a sheet of metal down here very poorly. If you heat up one end, what you'll find is that the electrons from over here can quickly transfer that momentum across the sheet of metal evenly to distribute the this momentum uh, caused by the heat across this whole sea which in turn will affect the uh, internal lattice of atoms. Also because there are so many free electrons in metals what you'll find is that there's a wide range of frequencies that the metals can absorb because there are so many free orbitals that electrons can occupy and then be moved up to. Moved up to. And as we know, you can only absorb uh, light within certain wavelengths so that you can move up a specific uh, amount of energy. And so what ends up happening in metals is that because there's so many electrons with so many options, they can absorb, metals can absorb a wide range of frequencies of light and then these electrons which are then excited will quickly go back down to their ground state dissipating this energy as a photon of light 
that it comes away from metal. And this is why metals tend to be uh, shiny, very reflective, and lustrous. Now metals are also very ductile. They're able to be uh, formed into different shapes. And this is because of two properties of metals. The first is malleability, which is a material, especially metals, ability to be bent into thin, flat sheets. And the second property is ductility, which is the ability of a material to be sort of extruded and forced into thin wires. And the reason metal can do this, whereas ionic compounds cannot, is because the uh, uh, crystal lattice of metal isn't made of such a uh, robust structure as it is in ionic compounds. So in metals, because there's no uh, repulsion between certain ions, as there are in ionic compounds, these atoms can easily slide past each other in order to form whatever shape you like. Whereas in an ionic compound, if you try to slide, say, chlorine past another chlorine, where they're both ionic, this repulsion will cause the layers to shear, breaking the compound. Finally, the bonds between uh, different metals and their sea of electrons, that is, the metallic bond strength uh, varies from metal to metal, and this is because of size of the atom, various nuclear charge, etc. And both the uh, effect of the changing nuclear charge and its bond to the electron C can be measured by a property called the enthalpy of vaporization. Now, I know that sounds really complicated, but it really isn't. What it is, is the amount of energy in kilojoules that a metal observe, absorbs rather uh, when it uh, goes from a, from a liquid phase to a gaseous phase. And the reason you can measure uh, enthalpy of vaporization in order to get its metallic bond strength is because when it goes from a liquid to a gas, it separates from a sea of electrons and becomes its own independent atom.